Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining with us. I hope uh, everyone is well. So, as uh, Mr. Mani introduced, I'm Hanyan. I work as an application engineer. I uh, mainly take care of design, POC, for sales, and education. So, so my aim for today's presentation is to introduce and explain different applications of all our IP-based products. So, please make it very interactive. I know afternoon sessions are very hard, like you know, having the short uh, attention span and everything. So please make it as interactive as possible. So if you ask questions, it's like a one-to-one -one session. So you can always unmute a microphone and interrupt me whenever you want. So without uh, any further ado, let's jump right into the topic. So we, I mainly segregated the today's structure into four main things. First is networking basics. So like, you know, how much debt networking that do need to know. So first of all, I think most of you all pretty much like, you know, in, in advance, like, you know, with knowledge when it comes to networking, because you deal with it every day with assigning all the like massive infrastructure of all your global teams and local, like, you know, or Bangalore or other regions. So I'm not going to go much into the technical aspect of networking. So from the sure side and on the product that we deal with. So what we require from you as an end user, so I'll put forth so that for future designs, you can keep that in mind. So next I'm going to talk about Dante and the 67, how it can be very helpful for audio. And the next thing is show audio ecosystem that Mr. Devraj, I think you might have attended the session. So you might have uh, like, you know, he gave an overview. So I'm going to take it in depth a little bit on how you can put those products into perspective. So where are you going to use it? like how you're going to use it, what are the applications and so on and so forth. And the fourth main thing is like, we can see the case studies and also different other brands, like apart from sure, what other brands might be solutions that we offer. Dave, so uh, sorry to stop you in between. I think no your audio is coming muffled. It's kind of muffled. Okay. Uh, Ariel, I also, your, your audio is too much uh, echo. Please oh, speak in the, in the microphone. Use is headphones. It is it clear now? Or is it still uh, muffled? Yeah, it's clear now. Kind of a little okay. bit clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if there's any problem, please let me know. Thanks for bringing it up. So, okay. The the first the topic that we're gonna see is uh, networking basics. So first of all, before going into the networking networking basics, so why do we need network audio in the first place? So it is first of all, it's very cost effective. Suppose if you're having a mixer, having a 20 channel or 10 channel, you have to route 10 different unlock cables for each microphone. But with the networking, you can write or uh, like, you know, route a single CAT6 cable and you the, all the audio can be routed very easily. And also for the scope of flexibility. For example, now you, your console might need 10 or 12 inputs or even the DSP might need 10 or 12 inputs. In future, if you want to increase more uh, channel count, you can absolutely do so. And you can monitor remotely and you have a lot of headroom. Like, you know, when it comes down to audio, like you don't find the bandwidth lagging because like in audio it takes very less bandwidth compared to video and other services which internet offers. So based on this, we, uh, we know that like, you know, networking is a much better protocol when it comes down to in installed infrastructure. So so the first thing that we need to know is what is like a transmission mode. What are the different transmission modes which are available? The first is a unicast. So as you all know, unicast is one to one. And we have multicast that is one to many. So suppose if three devices want those information, you can send it to only three devices and broadcast is of course, like sending it to all the other parameters. So this is basically what all these functions are. I'm, I'm very sure that you all be very familiar with with all these uh, cash, multicast, and broadcast. The reason why I brought it up is because for this for this application to understand what is unicast and multicast is very important for Dante. So the next most important aspect. Uh, let me just clear this.
Okay, I think uh, I got a glitch issue. So the next most important thing is a cables part. So what kind of cables that we need to use? Always use Cat5 or Cat6C as an end user. Like, you know, when you're always planning for an IT infrastructure, infrastructure since all are uh, like, you know, the gigabit switches or need at least one gigabit to transfer, I think only Cat5E and Cat6 and Cat6A or Cat5E and above can support a transmission of one GBBS uh, speed. So it's always good to consider Cat5E and Cat6. And the, for audio especially, you should always go for shielded cables, which is here, like, you know, to, to minimize all the, like, you know, interference noises, which happens usually in unlock cables. And also it might happen in, uh, it's very, very less compared to the unlock cables, but it's better that you shield the cables always. So there is one such case in which I happen to be on site. So this is one of the site in Chennai where they have not used a STP uh, cable, a shielded Cat6 cable, and they were facing a lot of issues. And while planning, they didn't plan for enough uh, headroom. For example, I wanted to bring this tile to, to four feet before, and I want to put it here. But unfortunately, they couldn't do it because they didn't plan well before. So these kind of things might happen. So when you're planning for infrastructure, make sure that enough headroom to move the, like, you know, the microphones, the DSPs, any part, so which, uh, like, you know, which can be moved so that you have enough headroom to move these accessories. So enough more planning is needed. And when it comes down to switches, so there are a lot of things which are involved in switches. So I'm going to talk a little bit on a uh, Dante perspective. Then I'm going to tell you what exactly, uh, why Dante is better. So the first thing is, the question is like whether you want a managed or unmanaged switch. So as a big company like Goldman Sachs, of course you would obviously need to go for a managed switch because you have a lot of applications, a lot of rooms which you are planning and especially me being there in one of your site uh, in Bangalore. So I know like the infrastructure that you already have in place. So for that like massive amount of infrastructure, you definitely need a managed switch. So if it's a standalone a unit, for example, if there is one FCR room in which it is not any way linked to the other FCRs or uh, to the your own network, in that case, you don't have to especially go for an a managed switch. You can very well go with a managed switch. So also always go for start topology, like never daisy chain items because each daisy chain will add latency to your whole network. So make sure you do it. And also whether I told you before, if there's one is FCR, which is a standalone FCR, like which is not connected to all the other FCRs. But I think as, uh, as a company, as a Goldman Sachs, I don't, I, I see it as a very rare thing that a standalone, my perspective is that the standalone room will be there. But if there's anything, please uh, consider this. So this is very, very important. So make sure on also all the IP addresses fall in the same range. So uh, that is also very important. So they, these are uh, common switch recommendations that uh, which are very, very important, which can be, might be overlooked also. So use a managed switch, gigabit switch for bandwidth. And especially when it comes down to latest technology, all the hardware, so they come with PoE power. So they come with support of PoE power so that you don't have to provide plug points on the ceiling, which is very feasible. So make sure you have enough headroom for example, one of our MXA 910 tiles uh, take nine watts. In FCR1, you're using four of the nine tins. So that means you have to use at least 36 watts in the POA switch. And please make sure that you have enough headroom over and above that, so that for smooth operation of power. Suppose even if there's any, for example, just I'm assuming, even if there's any Creston controller or any other controller, POA devices which you happen to put in the same switch later for expansion and you might you know, like you know need more power to run the microphones right so make sure you have enough power headroom also and like you know since all the ip networks use ports make sure uh, you disable energy efficient ethernet so what happens basically in that is so when the port is not used for a particular amount of time it's like it's like your laptop 
when you don't use a laptop a particular amount of time it goes to sleep likewise you know some ports come in default switches manage especially manage switches come in default mode switches that if the port is not been used for let's say 4 hours or 5 hours the port goes automatic to sleep so that is strictly not recommended so make sure if you are using a managed switch like don't use that and of course you should support multi class so i'm going to explain a little bit more on multicast part if you are not familiar with that term multicast so how it is used and how it's naturally applied to the network i will explain more on the dante part so the next is the ip addressing so when i learned ip addressing this is how i actually perceived it ip addressing is nothing but a uh, my house address so basically i order some goods in amazon so they deliver it based on my address so that is basically an ip addressing so why it is very very different and all those things you are i know you are very very familiar with all these things i'm not going to repeat what you already know but as a as representing sun infonet and show there are certain things that we need from your end to consider for example some devices example for mxa 910s take two ip addresses one for audio and one for control so basically you need two ip addresses so make sure if you are planning a static ip addresses for a very large network such as your fcrs so make sure you have like each device has two ip addresses like different kinds of subnet so whether fcr1 is the same subnet or a different subnet so whether it comes in a same vlan or a different vlan so all these things that you know that that is very very crucial and like you know it's very very like we might neglect it sometimes and that later we have to unplan and like you know plan everything back so it it happened in my experience it happened many a times for in customers because they might have ignored the two ip address part they say might have not conveyed that part to the in customer so that cost more trouble and more problem so in in your case uh, make sure you have like enough ip addresses for enough all the show devices and the last part is having the right subnet so subnet are very important for uh, any form of ip addressing especially for audio network so for audio to be routed between the devices and all those things the subnet has to be very clear this is an example which shows a string of ip addresses which which has a like you know 2 5 2 5 2 5 5.0 so later that there's one subnet which is different so this is this audio cannot pass through between these three devices to the fourth one so this basically the networking part which i wanted from your end i know i i just lost it a bit through because i don't want to tell the things which you already know so if there's any question any clarification that uh, you have with this uh, introduction of networking basics please treat free to unmute your microphone and ask if you if you have a like you know bad network also you can put it in the chat and we will uh, i can help you with that it can be anything like even small thing which i might have been missed or any queries that uh, you had while uh, when you are designing the fcrs for different structured networks can be anything you can uh, you can put put it forward okay i think uh, it's clear as of now so let me proceed with the next part of the presentation which is the dante so munish can you confirm if my audio is clear and my uh, presentation is uh, seen is is it's clear it's clear and like presentation okay. visible okay thank you so the next topic is the next agenda for today is the dante networking which is what we are mainly going to discuss today so all these things you might have already been through so the first is what is dante dante is digital audio network through ethernet basically you need uh, there are different hardwares and softwares which are very very essential for the dante network so what dante does a lot of things you know in, in, in very high precision like for example it can one 
Dante device can transfer up to 512 inputs and outputs, one Dante device. So if the device supports 512 channels, it can do so, that is the maximum capacity. And like, you know, the bandwidth what Dante uses or the total network uses is very, very, very less. For example, Dante recommends a gigabit switch for even a channel of 64, 64 ins and outs all put together, it's just gonna take little bit equal to 80 MB or so. So we have enough and more headroom when it comes down to Dante and it takes care of its own latency part. So for, for example, if you have any, uh, like, you know, any such experiences going into listening into large halls, so you might have listened to sounds, right? So one coming from the main speaker, which is at the front, there might be another sound which is coming from the second speaker. You might have experienced it experience it, uh, that kind of situation if the system is not tuned properly. So Dante takes care of all the latency part all by itself. So even for a, let's say, assume for a worst case scenario, even if there is going to be a 10 hop switch, for example, like let's assume that you have 10 FCRs, right? You have FCR 1, 2, 3, and 4, so on and so forth. Even if you have each switch for each FCRs on all those devices has to talk between each other, the maximum latency on Dante network would be only five millisecond. So that is like touching the border of acceptable range for human here to notice a fair, like, you know, a delay. So Dante is very, very fast. So in terms of latency, you don't have to literally worry about it. Even it, it can go as low as 150 microsecond. So it is very, very highly flexible, highly high, high precision tool. So, and also it can transmit a large amount of data in a very small, like, you know, one CAT6 cable or even a very less infrastructure. So this is mainly on Dante. And there's one more important thing which Dante takes care of it. So without tuning everything is that clocking. So for example, if a microphone picks up and it transmits data to some DSP, right? So DSP takes some amount time to processing and then it sends to the video codec and video codec to far end. And there are a lot of things which are involved in between, right? So clocking is like a coir conductor. So if you have been to any of the, like seen any of the operas or you've been to any of the operas, there's one guy who constantly monitors time with a stick. So, so he'll go left, right, and he will monitor the whole entire show orchestra basically and keeps time of the, all the players and all the singers. So Dante basically does that. So it tells each of the devices in the same network to follow a strict protocol. So this is how basically Dante works all of it. So this is mainly just an overview of Dante. For Dante, you need a Dante controller. This is exactly how it looks like. So you can route an audio just by clicking a button. So if it's an unlocked device, you have one device, let's say you have a like, you know, mixer, which has six or eight channel, like let's say, let's take a small mixer and you route it, like, you know, you have six microphone inputs which are going. That means you need six different cables. So six different copper wires. And even with the, if you see the copper wire, it will go from microphone to the mixer, mixer to the speaker. It's just one copper wire, which is going. So if you, if there is a fault. So let's assume that the mic one is not working you know for sure that the problem is on the mic one cable and not on anything else. So this is basically very important. For a Dante network, you can't figure out like that because there are 64, 74, even 512 channels which is going in one single CAT6 cable. So the, the whole routing is not transparent, but also it's very, very easy and you can monitor in real time. So like, you know, there are a lot of advantages like going on Dante network. So, so this is one in one very, very critical information is that a lot of people might ignore this information. So this is the information I thought which should be very, very relevant for you. Uh, so there are two kinds of Dante platform. One is Brooklyn 2 and one is Ultimo X, which sure uses. So what basically happens in this is Dante doesn't send signals one to one. So for example, if you take an analog XLR cable with the microphone and plug it directly into the mixer, so it has one cable which is going in between, right? 
so that is only one channel but how dante works is that four channels are grouped together as one flow so this cart is very very self explanatory so even though there is you are transmitting only one channel it takes one flow so four channel can accommodate to it so this is the way how dante basically works so for example an ultimo x supports two transmit flows and receive flow receive flows whereas a brooklyn tool such as like you know the very own mxc 910 that you use uses 32 transmit and receive flows so this is very important i'll tell in the coming slide why this is very very important so we have the mxc 310s which are which are there so you might have seen this product this is a 310 so it is has ultimo x so it has two flows so i am routing the green ones the green ones are these devices and the blue ones which i've routed here the flow ch four channels are the second ones as you know four channels take one flow so the flow one goes to the r channel and the flow two goes to the r channel and the signal completely works so this is a very good network let's take this network for example so we have four like transmit flows whereas the sure ani 4 in xlr can receive only two two flows so when it the moment you route the third flow this doesn't take the inputs so only the first and second flows the third and flow third and flow does not work so this is very 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 important lot of people might ignore this uh, subject altogether so the reason why this is very very important because this is where the multicast flow comes into play so at the start of the presentation i was telling you one simple thing like you know when one signal transmits to one device that is a unicast and one to many is multicast this is where multicast comes into play so instead of sending three different signals to three different uh, receivers what we what dante does is it duplicates the signal so basically it sends the same signal to three different so that is basically multicast so you can use multicast flows to transmit datas and between ultimo x devices that is the devices which supports only two networks so you can easily transmit and receive data with this multicast flow for example uh like even for one of your fcrs we tried using multicast so for uh, with mxa 910s and with the the core 1509 so we tried using multicast devices so just check and verify whether this all things are working with very good and all those things when i was configuring so this is mainly about like the dante part which you need to know and the next is one interesting thing which is coming which is very very new so as you all know like show products gets upgraded over time to time so with the recent upgrades most of the show devices are dante domain manager compatible so what that mean what that means is see for example you have different fcrs right so you have fcr 1 2 1 3 and 4 so when i was trying to configure the fcrs i couldn't like you know connect to different mx910 in the fcr 2a or 2b or even 3a or 3b so i have to go physically connected so with this dante domain manager so if you have like we can dante routing can be done with cross subnets so this is a very very important technology which was launched very recently to all show show products basically so including the ulxts the mxa 910s so all the products have like dante domain manager so i'll i'll show you a very short video on uh, a dante domain manager and its uh, usefulness Dante is the de facto standard for audio connectivity adopted by hundreds of professional AV manufacturers worldwide. As AV and IT technologies are merging, industry professionals expect the same level of management for AV as their other systems. Dante Domain Manager is a revolutionary enterprise-wide management platform specifically engineered to secure, scale, and manage Dante audio systems. By allowing you to divide your system setup, Dante Domain Manager ensures users only have access to the devices they need. You can secure audio networks from accidental changes, control who can make modifications, and manage the health and security of your audio networking in real time. With visibility of the status of networked audio devices, 
you have detailed logging and reporting on events and changes, all via a simple, configurable web interface. Scale and segment audio systems, grouping devices together, regardless of network infrastructure. Dante Domain Manager, it's all you'll ever need for complete AV network control. I hope that information was very, very clear. So Dante Domain Manager is a very, very powerful tool, very flexible. As the name suggests, it's like basically deals with domain names. So basically, if you have FCR ones and FCR one has four tiles, with just a click of a button, you can configure all those devices with in a single location or spot. So this is very, very useful. There is, there is one important webinar which is coming, which is organized by Shore and Dante together. So we will update you on how uh, the date and time of the webinars and what is exactly the agenda of it. So if you have any questions on Dante Domain Manager, this, you can bring it up there. It's a very, very useful tool for, for example, such as a company like Goldman Sachs, where you do mass deployments and you can very e easily monitor, organize all the show devices, all basically all Dante devices together. And also you can, all most of the show products are Dante Domain Manager ready with, with the new firmware upgrades. And uh, along with Dante, there's one protocol which is standardized being used is the A67. For example, let's take one of your, I, like, you know, since you can relate to your FCRs, so I'm going to take more of your FCRs as an example because personally, I can relate to FCRs because uh, I work there for like, you know, for post-sale support basically. So I can, I know what are the products which are being used. So I can, uh, I do, I do take an example of Bangor FCRs. So one of the example is uh, the QSE fight and I is being used. So, but there we were using Dante, but uh, you can you can basically you route audio between a QAC just for your reference between a QAC and Shure devices because QAC supports A67 and Shure also supports A67. So you cannot you can link devices such as this. So you don't need a Dante card in either of these devices for it to work. So A67 is very well accepted by the Dante protocol. So you can route audio between these two devices as well. So this is just for your for your information. So most again, all of the show devices support with the new firmware upgrade, even the MSA 310s, the ANA boxes, all the show devices supports A67. So you can route audio between Dante and A67. So this is basically information on Dante before we move into more solution and application uh, application based case studies. So if you have any questions with uh, like, you know, I think this is more of a technical part and what comes next is more of an application part. So if there are any questions such as what are the concepts which I've told you last 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So please uh, feel free to ask questions. Okay, there is one question which is, came on the chat, which I'm going to address it. So question is, Multicasting, will there be any loss while duplicating the channel? No, there won't be any loss. It's like just like multi, like, you know, you mean by loss or latency is that it, it, there's completely no loss if you multicast it. Hope uh, I was clear with that. So, uh, so that's why it will like, you know, on ordinate and sure is like, you know, having a very uh, like in-depth session on only the Dante protocols. So I think as, uh, as like an end customer, you use most of the products which are Dante based. I think that uh, seminar would be very useful for you. So if there's any questions, you can also put it in the chat and you can also send it to me privately. So I can address the questions as I did now. So I think I'm clear till with this uh, point. So let me go go to the next agenda is that show audio ecosystem. So this is what I like the most uh, when it comes down to talking about solutions. So we can explore a lot of different possibilities of, for example, as a designer, I may think in one perspective, like, no, I put the microphones here, I can use the speakers here. 
so as as an customer you have different approach to the solution altogether so you have you can come up with a lot of different requests so which will make us think more and we will able to provide with more solutions so this is exactly why sure audio ecosystem which was launched with a lot of exciting new products and which is like more like out of the box uh, thinking so a lot of like lot of new products which are very exciting so i'm going to talk about all these products in the coming slide and basically what the application is so so let's take this fcr so this is fcr1 so i think last may or one one year before i was there exactly i think so uh last may so basically we were testing all the fcr rooms so this is mr sony which uh, who was heading the covid testing part and there is mr karan who was uh, the consultant for the meeting so myself from i as i represent sun and phonet i went for sure and mr amarnath was there so we were exploring all the possibilities of different configurations which were suitable for this room so this is the most familiar site so as you can see we were using a python i for the dsp and we were using four mxa 910s in the room and we are using we were using six uh, ceiling speakers for the same room so this is the ceiling speakers whatever which is there in the ceiling so these are there on the dsp part of course you know so with the reason why i'm bringing up the third party products also in, in our webinar is to tell you that with the new firmware upgrade a p300 or dsp can support up to 4 mxa 910s so earlier what we decided is that each lobe would need one ac channel but now ac has in, has been inbuilt in the microphone itself so that you don't have to use the dsp ac resources so 4 mxa 910s can be used with one p300 so this is as any customer you can see the total cost effective solution that it can offer you so the total so the one fight and i let's assume that it's going to cost you x amount this is going to be x like of course even like 50 to 50 at least 50% cheaper than that so you you can explore different possibilities and different and, and i'm not we are not compromising anything on the audio part so it's just that mxa 910 both show devices they talk to each other and they they communicate each other well so we can uh, do this kind of integration with mxa 910s and the p300 or also high power processing which has been in, like you know late, late of lately introduced in the mxa 910s so this is basically that and when it comes down to ceiling speakers we have newly launched the mxn 5c which is our dante based poe plus powered ceiling speakers so these are very efficient they have wider coverage like you know 100 degree at at the nominal level and even at 2 kilohertz it can even extend up to 130 degree so it is a very wider coverage so you can use it for different applications and you can even design that let me show you a very small presentation on the newly launched mxn 5c a network tele ceiling loudspeaker The Shure Microflex MXN 5C network ceiling loudspeaker integrates seamlessly with Microflex Advanced Array microphones and Intellimix DSP to provide high-quality speech reproduction for AV conferencing applications. The plenum-rated low-profile design allows easy installation in drop ceiling configurations. Just one cable carries Dante audio, control, and PoE or PoE Plus power, eliminating the need for an outboard amplifier. Integrated DSP utilities including EQ, delay, a limiter, and a built-in signal generator provide flexibility in setup and configuration. With Shure audio encryption, audio connections between every Shure component in the room are secure. Dante domain manager compatibility allows access to be controlled, providing peace of mind for confidential meetings. Designer system configuration software allows you to visualize speaker coverage alongside mic coverage. System on audio asset management software allows remote management and troubleshooting of all Shure network devices through one convenient portal. The MXN 5C network ceiling loudspeaker and the entire Shure network system product portfolio deliver premium audio performance with unmatched ease of deployment. Our very new product, which I'm personally very excited about. 
So I have not uh, actually just very launched, uh, newly launched in I, uh, ISE Infocom Connected. I think a lot of you might have attended the session. So, so like as yes, you can see, the advantage is even the designing part. So everything works on a show designer common platform. So everything is working on a common platform and it's not just a speaker. So it has even EQ, signal generators, delay limiters, and all the controls. It has inbuilt DSP. It has different gains. You have two different inputs and the speaker output all together. So it is a much more than just a loudspeaker. And with, with the design flexibility, you can be rest assured that your signal is going to cover these audiences. For example, if you put that FCR layout into the show designer, so it will tell you that four ceiling speakers would be enough to cover the room based on the seating layouts. So you can design with much precision. So basically, one thing to note as, uh, as an end customer is that these network ceiling speakers need PoE plus power. So it takes approximately 24 watts. So that is that one thing that you need to keep in mind. So it, it needs PoE plus switch. So this is a very good uh, speaker. So hopefully maybe we might, like, you know, after the lockdown, we might be able to show you this speaker in person. So this is, this is the schematics, which, which I personally uh, thought would do of going for different items from starting from microphone to the loudspeaker. So we have an end-to-end -end solution which is designed from show so that each devices have good encryption so that you can all show devices have encryption so that other third-party elements cannot tap into your network. So show to show encryption is available. So you can use up to four nine tens with one T300. You can use our four ceiling array uh, network loudspeakers and just for a change i wanted to introduce one more new product is that mxw i'm going to talk about it a little bit more on that friend but i'm going to explain so a little bit more on the mxa 910 part so so what before going that i think you use the product even more on a daily basis like like how we do basically i get to work on the product especially when i go for demos or post-sale support or such things are like like that. But you as an as a as an end product end user customer, you use the product every day. So maybe you can have a lot lot more better experience on the MXA 910 especially. So if some of you can confirm whether the MXA 910s have been upgraded, because with the latest firmware we have a lot more new functions which are available in MXA 910. For example, AEC is inbuilt. So you don't have to rely on, as I told you before, you don't have to rely on the DSP resources of for the AEC. You can utilize the AEC resources in the MXA 910s. So this is one of the very powerful feature that we launched last year. And what we have is autofocus. So when I came to the one of the FCRs, so I, I was speaking to Mr. Sony. Mr. Sony was telling me that there are different seating layouts for different uh, rooms, like for example, theater seating, classroom seating, long table, so on and so forth. At least there were four different seating layouts. But unfortunately, there were no presets which was saved and recalled. So in that case, the lobe stays only there. So even if there is a different uh, seating layout, the lobe was still staying in the old previous position. So that, that was not very efficient. So with the new firmware upgrade with the autofocus technology, the lobes can know where the talker is. So it has a high speech sensitivity so that it, it can focus more on the speech part and not on the noise. So it is very efficient in that uh, case. So if anybody from the Goldman Sachs team can confirm whether the like MXA 910s have been upgraded or still it runs in the old platform. I think it should be in the nine, uh, old for platform only if I'm not wrong. Prakash, can you reconfirm it? Uh, no, uh, I think the day one what we have uh, installed, uh, and it, it's okay. Oh, okay. yes, even Mr. Prakash was there when I was there. So yeah. I think yeah. if, uh, uh, like if uh, if the tiles have been not been upgraded, so maybe after everything goes down smoothly after the lockdown, everything is over. Maybe myself and Munish can come have a visit because even Pali wanted to visit regarding the wireless part. So maybe yeah. we all can come down one day and give you a practical approach how, what are the different upgrades which have been, which we didn't recently. So maybe you can, uh, maybe you can allow us to do the upgradation if your company allows it to do. 
so maybe we can sounds good uh, at the moment still you know we haven't got uh, much of the vendors are not interacting uh, on the you know side yet so we will confirm back once we have clearance yeah definitely definitely thank that you really helpful thank you thank you so this is basically what we have launched uh, recently so apart from that we have uh, like as a so reason i was telling that 4 mxa 910 can work with p300 is that so it it takes a lot of dsp power so mxa has a lot of dsp power but as a consumer we need certain things which have been done from your side that is the acoustical part for example the room should be treated and the floor should be carpeted for example the fcr ones have uh, like you know motor uh, ceiling like sorry not the ceilings the drapes for the windows so it was a very beautiful room which was been uh, like you know when i went there all the drapes were open so i can see people walking right next to the fcrs but once the meeting started everything the drapes were good and the acoustics were pretty decent so everything was perfectly working fine so just as you did already all things perfectly i just want to go through which are really necessary for example you might have like in a system integrator might have not conveyed this to you so the rt60 value should be less than 500 milliseconds which is very important and the noise level of the room should not exceed more than 45 db these are the two main things and other than that you had already the drapes and already the floors were carpeted and everything was perfectly fine even the right side was glass but i think the reverberations were pretty decent for 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 those who are actually wondering what rt60 is i'm going to show you a very small illustration where like you know if you have if, if you have headphones or something like that you can put on the headphones or you can increase the volume so this is a video i'm going to play so um, which which will determine like which which can give you an experience of how different time of rt60 sounds like so this is a person who is standing uh, in a uh, in a uh, in a chamber so with that if if he plays uh, if he claps the audio this is exactly how it's going to sound like just give me a minute so i'll play that again for you this is exactly how it sounds like if he's in an anaerobic chamber so this is like the second one is like 1 millisecond rt60 but this is like a more semi treated place whereas the floors are carpeted but the <clears throat> but the ceilings on the walls are not acoustically treated so this is how 1 second rt60 sounds like i'll play that again so this is the 2 second rt60 value is like a person who is standing in a hallway so where there are a lot of reflections this is how the 2 seconds will sound like let me play that again so this is like a 3 second rt60 value which is he is standing in the basement which is like you know a long hall with absolutely nothing to observe and there are a lot of reflections so 3 seconds is basically the from the time he claps to the sound when it actually dies down so this is uh this is where rt60 comes into play and uh, it's very uh, ironic that when when we starting the presentation so i actually i'm sitting in an empty hall that's why uh, one one of you from the participant pointed out that my my voice is not clear because i'm in a very reverberant space actually my hall is absolutely empty and there are only one my chair and my cot uh, like the table is there so i think you're listening to a lot of reverberations this is exactly what shouldn't be happening when there is mfa right in so what i did to do to, to counteract the problem is i came in closer to the microphone so that there is less, less reflections unfortunately for msa 910 it has to stay on the ceiling so i cannot see just how i'm leaning forward and talking into the microphone we cannot do that to msa 910s and of course msa 910s has to perform better right so that we have to treat the room accordingly so if i was using the msa 910 in the same room i wouldn't be clear like you know 
the room has to be acoustically treated. There's no other way. So that is the importance of acoustic treatment. So hope I was clear with that point. So this is very important. Okay. So uh, we the MXE 910s can be used. So we were using it basically for the video conferencing application. But there are in many cases where we used MXA 910s for uh, voice lift applications also. So what basically voice lift is, so this is a very, very large room, right? So if the person is in a VC, let's assume the person X is sitting here, the far end can listen very clearly the person X via the MXA 910s which are here, right? MXA 910s which are here. But the person who's sitting in this room, so Mr. Tanmay is actually sitting here, who is my colleague? Uh, so he's sitting here. So if uh, if a person X is speaking, so Tanmay will not be able to hear what he is exactly trying to say. So this is where exactly voice lift comes into play. And a point to be noted is that MXA 910 is the only ceiling array microphone which can do a voice lift. So basically, why how we can do it? Because MXA 910 lobes are very very directional. They are like a shotgun microphone. So have you seen in any of the reporters or even the movies how they do like, you know, they hold the shotgun microphone right above your head so that it captures only you so that your sound is very clear. MXA 910 is doing just about that without a boom operator. So basically what the person who's holding the mic is what we call a boom operator. So it's even narrower than a shotgun microphone. So we can precisely capture the audio. For example, if I configure lobes, let's take this area, this lobe configuration, for example, so this is the place I was pointing at. So X he was here and this is one part of the room. The next part of the room is on the other side. So it exactly captures one or two audience and exactly sends that audio to the other side of the room. So we have a mix minus topology, sorry, mix minus configuration here so that we, we can take little, little more uh, like intuitive than a video conferencing system. Video conferencing system is very straightforward, but there are a lot of things involved in uh, Achieving voice lift, for example, one is a very, very good microphone such as MXA 910, which is again, I'm repeating, only a ceiling error microphone in uh, the world actually who can perform voice lift. And the next is you're using, uh, as we are the distributors of Maya Sound also, so we are using the MM4 XPs, which are very highly directional speakers. So, for example, let's take any XYZ uh, ceiling uh, speakers, for example. They have some, uh, let's say 130 or 120 coverage, right? So that, those kind of ceiling speakers will not be suitable for voice lift. So it ha should be having a very narrow coverage. So, so that it doesn't pick up what these lobes are picking up here. So it's like having, I'm not going to confuse you too much. It's like having your very own microphone, which is right in front of your table. And the speaker is also projecting on the same table. So it looks like it's a very complicated design. And we have successfully uh, did it in the uh, in Cape Germany in one of the uh, sites in Mumbai. So this is a very high profile room where the CEO, CDOs all make high decisions. So this is very well done and again one of our very highlights projects. And then we have our very own IAM Calicut which we design POC done everything from scratch. So for this we used nine MXA 910s in this room and 16 uh, ceiling speakers, 100 mod. As you can see, this was in Kerala. So it rains heavily over there and the flows were not cooperated. We are facing a lot of issues with uh, reverberation, RT60 value on the ceiling is not uh, treated properly. No, I mean, it's treated properly, I'm sorry, but it's again a hard ceiling. So there are holes, if you can see, if you can see in my presentation slide, there are holes here. So which 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 makes sound go in there and vibrate, so resonate or uh, reverb over there. So which was causing all sorts of problems and they're using acoustic tiles to cover all these things. So it was a very, very challenging site and we could able to do it because of how good MXA 910s are basically. So this is how I configure the system. This is the MXA 9 show designer. So I have the layout and I have the MXA 910s, nine MXA 910s, which are in live mode. So, so the basically this layout corresponds to this room. So I know when the person is sitting or standing, I know exactly where the lobe is getting activated. So should I have to move it a little back? Should I bring it a little front? How is this audio? All these things I was able to monitor very clearly. 
So we had a demo session with the end customer. So the trainer, basically, the, the uh, this is for IAM Calicut, if I'm not mentioned. So this is an educational institution for those who do not know. So they have different kind of scientists and other scholars who come and give lectures. So they basically, they don't want to hold a microphone. So the customer wanted a microphone less solution. So everybody in the room, even the person who is sitting at the last row and can, can, can be heard very clearly from to the lecturer. So I was personally be, like was there to experience this, uh, to experience this whole uh, demo and I was able to configure the system and the customers were very happy. Four rooms are already up and running. So four rooms are again in place. So this is one of our largest installation. There are totally eight rooms which are which are there and each room has nine MXA 910s. So this is one of our very large scale installation and this whole installation was published in uh, Innovate as an innovative project for this. this the whole project speaks for itself. So it's a very valuable project for us. So if Mr. Mani wants to add uh, anything with, uh, with this, uh, I think Mani is not in the participant list. So I think let me uh, go through it. So if anybody of, uh, I can see two questions in the chat. Uh, one minute, let me just read out. Can voice slip be implemented for divisible FCR rooms? Okay, so that's a very good question. So like, for example, if I'm not wrong, if memory is correct, I think FCR 3 is a uh, dual rooms. So FCR 3A and 3B, that is there. So yes, it is possible. So FCR, FCR like in FCRs, can be implemented. So there are certain norms that room should be at least 25 feet long, and I'm sure the FCRs, both FCRs put together, like e even in a combined mode, I think uh, it will be more than 25 feet. I think it's possible. So, can speech coming from new building even present divisible room FCR? So I, I'm not able to understand the second question. So if we can elaborate that in the coming uh, slide, I can address that as well. So yes, to answer your first part of your question, yes, uh, voice lift can be implemented in FCR rooms provided we have good acoustical treatment and we can design the solutions for voice lift. So this is one of the case studies. And the next is MXW product. So MXW is, uh, is a deck-based wireless system where it works on 1.9 GHz platform. So not uh, like uh, the normal platform like UHF works. So this works as a different protocol altogether. There are many advantages with MXW systems. I'll first, I'll tell the advantages and where you can use it. So advantages are it does automatic frequency coordination. For example, if you take ULXT or Axiom Digital, you have to sync the frequencies, at least for the first time, in case of Axiom Digital. But in terms of MXW, you can just turn on the receiver and it gets automatically synced. Even in a small space, you can use up to 60 microphones. So one, one, one very, very good advantage of the MXW system is that it has one written audio channel. So these are not, these are not just microphones. They have a receiver as well. For example, they have a 3.5 mm jack, which can transmit foreign audio back to the receiver. Sorry, transmitter in this case. So for example, this is a few, uh, like Royal Enfield, which in Chennai is a research in, research where they test different like, like, you know, different engines. So this is called an engine dyno room where the controller will give instruction to the rider who is here. So these are these are the winds, uh, like, you know, the windmill, like which blows air approximately 1,200 RPM. That is equal to 120 kilometer per hour or even 130 kilometer hour wind speed. So even if I stand here, I'm not like, you know, I cannot stand here literally because the wind will definitely push me back. So these kind of tough conditions, we could able to test these microphones. So it performed really well and we were able to, they are already like, you know, went on with the solution of these units. So these are very, very good microphones. Apart from that, you can, uh, this comes in different versions as well. So if you want a handle, body pack, boundary, label and gooseneck, you can use it. So again, this is to mention again, this is a transceiver it can both send and receive channels. So there are two things which you need to keep in 
point. First thing is these have high latency. So unlike the ULST and Axiant, which are very low latency, these can be used for speech applications only. So we don't recommend it for music applications. That's the first thing. And uh, and the second thing is you can uh, you cannot you cannot use it for uh, music applications. So basically, you can use it for only for speech applications. So because you have a uh, different latency structure, you can use it for speech application only. And you cannot use it for divisible rooms. For example, if you have FCR 3A and 3B, so what we use, what we did in the FCRs is you used a splitter and we split antenna A in one room, antenna B in the next room. So here we cannot actually do it. So this is not recommended for divisible rooms and also for music applications. For small FCRs, like for example, FCR 1 or FCR 4, but just individual rooms, we can definitely go for this. MXW system. So this is uh, another solution for a small huddle room. So uh, this is one of my favorite product of the year, which is the MXA 17, which is here. So this is the ceiling, uh, sorry, the linear array microphone as we call. So it comes in two versions, two feet and seven feet. This is like up, like as you all, like, you know, saw Devra's presentation on the other day, of how these microphones use. So this is basically how you can integrate it in a small room such as this. So for example, if you have small huddle room, this can cover up to 16 feet. So 16 to 20, 20 feet, it can cover the two feet versions. So you can use it for small room applications such as this. So integrated with our software based DSP with a sure network ceiling array microphone. Again, from starting from audio chain, from microphone to speaker, you can give a complete solution of show audio ecosystem. So this is one of the advantages of that. So let me show you a very small presentation on what MXA 910 is and what does it do. The Shure Microflex Advance MXA 710 Linear Array Microphone delivers high quality audio capture in premium AV conferencing environments. Available in two lengths and three colors, its aesthetic design blends into modern collaboration environments. The sleek, linear form factor allows for placement horizontally or vertically around a display, or on a wall, ceiling, or table. Steerable coverage captures audio anywhere in the room with up to four or eight lobes. Autofocus technology fine tunes each lobe position in real time when participants shift in their seats. Onboard Intellimix DSP eliminates the need for additional DSP hardware for smaller rooms. For larger rooms or situations where individual processing on each microphone channel is desired, the MXA710 can be used with the Intellimix P300 DSP or Intellimix Room Software-based DSP. With Sure Audio Encryption, audio connections between every Sure component in the room are secure. Dante Domain Manager compatibility allows access to be controlled providing peace of mind for confidential meetings. Just one network cable carries Dante and AES67 audio, control, and PoE power. LED status bars at each end indicate microphone status and offer adjustable colors and brightness. Designer system configuration software provides streamlined setup and configuration, while system on audio asset management software provides remote management and troubleshooting of all Shure network devices through one convenient portal. The MXA710 Linear Array Microphone joins the Shure Network Systems product portfolio to deliver premium audio performance with unmatched ease of deployment. This is basically the MXA 710s, which can be mounted on the ceiling, on the table, and also on the near the audio display. So it's like a product which can bridge the MXA 310s and the MXA 910s. So we can use it for video conferencing applications, both for sorry, conferencing application, both audio and video. So as you as you have, uh, have an example here. So this is one setup where the MXA 710s, which are kept in between two displays in a vertical position. So this is how the lobes have been configured. So this is 
This is how if you can keep it on the ceiling. And even if you want to flush mount it on the table, you can do so. So there are many versions, many mounting of uh, like options which are available. You can even suspend it from the ceiling. If you want to, you can flush mount it to the ceiling as well. So we have different accessories for you to do so. So this is again PoE powered. So just to cover on a little bit of our concepts. So this takes nine watt power again. So if you're considering a PoE switch, consider nine watts for each MXA 710s. So as you can have multiple MXA 710s which are routed in, like how we have multiple MXA 910s which are used in spaces, we can use it multiple 710s also to cover different seating layouts if necessary. So one, so you, again, these MXA 710s are again have AC which are inbuilt and we have the autofocus technology which are being inbuilt. So again, no other competitors can match these items when it comes down to reliability and quality and performance and basically on the innovation front. So these are very top-notch mic microphones. So along with this product, so we have launched another software-based DSP, so which can, re which will, uh, which, uh, which basically replaces all hardware. So for example, for smaller rooms, we can use a full integrated Dante based structure. For example, if your microphone is MXA and you have a soft codec which can run like, you know, Zoom or Skype, two jeans. And we have a network ceiling array, sorry, net network array speakers. So we can have a whole ecosystem based on these examples such as this. So you can use one of our Intellimix room DSP. So let me show you a small, small like you know footage on how Intellimix like you know it's, it's the new revolution of the software based DSP. So let me play that video. The first conference calls were simple. One person talks, everyone listens, end of discussion. As things progressed, companies tried the latest tools for connecting. Then video conferencing exploded. More people, more rooms, more microphones. But without proper processing, added mics added issues. Echo, noise, too loud, too quiet. Digital signal processing hardware helped, but the cost and complexity can find great calls to C-suite spaces. What about everyone else? We could see each other, but could anyone understand what was being said? The audio revolution has arrived. Introducing Intellimix Room, the first audio processing software for Windows 10 PCs optimized for sure conferencing microphones. Rather than having to unbox and install multiple DSP units, simply download and deploy software to in-room devices in seconds. Requiring no messy cables, additional hardware, or bloated AV racks, more time and budget opens up to outfit more spaces. Intellimix Room works seamlessly with the most popular conferencing platforms, reducing echoes, eliminating background noise, and delivering crystal clear calls. Thanks to decades of sure audio expertise, the days of complex DSP hardware end with a simple download. That is our Intellimix room. So this replaces the hardware DSP. So it has two versions. One is eight channel AEC and 16 channel AEC, apart from eight auxiliary Dante inputs and outputs. So it gives you a lot more channels. Suppose if you take 16 AEC channels version, so you can have 16 AEC channels, Dante AEC channels plus another six. So you have a lot of inputs and outputs flexibility so it can run alongside any applications. For example, if you want to install it on your uh, Nook system, but that's, like you don't need a separate standalone computer for Intellimix Room to run. So the one recommendation as an end user, what we require is it should be Windows 10 64-bit, 8 gig RAM, 5 gigabits hard, hard, hard disk space. So all these things, I think most of the systems will have, but one of the main thing is that it needs SSD for Intellimix room to perform efficiently, it needs SSD. So you can have a lot of options with this. So we mainly recommend it using for conferencing applications along with soft codec. So if there's any small space which are there, 
so as of now we recommended for with, without like you know with, with we getting more information on the future upgrades and everything so as of now we recommended using it for uh, conferencing applications with soft codec so this is basically all our new products portfolio so there can be some places where you cannot acoustically treat it so in that case you might want a different kind of solutions which especially in the times of this when the covid 19 also the social distancing is there seriously we don't know when we're actually going to be in a very large space like you know everybody like for example take one of your fcrs so i think fcr is like equally like easily like 60 to 70 percent capacity so i don't like i don't know when that will happen like full capacity people sitting over there so we have a product right for that portfolio where social distancing is very much uh, needed this time of time this time of time we have this mxc w system so it is a fully integrated system where it has a microphone it has a touchscreen display it has a speaker in the belt so also it has different versions of gooseneck it has battery operations which can stand up to 11 hours of operations so it is a fully functional system again it works on dante as well so all these products which i'm talking about here works on dante so this is the whole as the topic suggested it's all audio over ip so whatever i spoke till now or even the end of the presentation is all ip based so even this solution is ip based so you can route audio it has 10 dante inputs and outputs it, it is also very very flexible so this mxc wapt can host like you know 125 of these units so the mxc 640 this units it can handle up to 125 of this so you need a gigabit pico e power switch to power this device mxc wapt so once the device is powered it's very easy to connect and again this works on 2.5 and 5 gigahertz platform and the second thing is you don't have to worry about frequency coordination at all it takes all three channels and use it very effectively even though even if it senses a little interference in the whole system it immediately switches to a new channel so in that case it is a lot more effective so you don't just have to just like a plug and play system all you have to do is just switch on this work automatically it has a web gui in which you can uh, like you know perform different kinds of operations so this is one of the poc which i did so the customer wanted to use video conferencing, also local speech for this large room. They don't want to use speakers at all. So what I did is I routed with this speaker, I routed the far end audio, the pre, like local local speech audio, and also the presentation audio. Even the speed content via YouTube, and it was working perfectly fine. So if you want one one stop solution for everything, like for example one device which can give you all the solutions. You can obviously, of course, you can go for MXCW, which is the Microflex Complete Wireless. So with social distancing comes into play. So for example, solutions such as this, where each person might have to sit, like, you know, with a lot more spacing than usually, which is required. A person who's sitting here will not be heard by this speaker, by this talker at all. So in that case, we need an integrated system which can have these functions as well. So, for example, if the room such as as large as this, so the talker who is sitting here will not be able to hear what this guy is saying, absolutely saying. The X person Y will not be heard what X is saying. Also, to achieve voice lift with MXA 910s and with ceiling speakers is not at all possible with high reflective surfaces with large ceilings, glass walls, with, with, with these kind of environments, it's not at all possible. So it's like a worst case scenario for achieve worst lift, but still we were able to do with FXCW solutions. So this is one of the video which, uh, which I'm going to play, which is which we did a meeting with the PSNI Global Alliance. So with this, how worst lift works efficiently with MXCW, we can have, have a look at it.
My name is Chris Miller. I'm the executive director of the PSNI Global Alliance. The PSNI Alliance is made up of integrators, technology solution providers from around the world. There's a lot of passionate people within our team in the audiovisual industry. I've been in this industry for 30 years and I've been part of PSNI now for almost two years. And I can tell the experience has been incredible because really what we try to do is connect in the communications world and what we're doing here is connecting through the people. Everybody wants to talk, to meet and to work together on every place in the world. So it's a lot of uh, possibilities and uh, challenges for us. Today, actually, you can see this is a really, really large and long room. It was funny because I was sitting in the front row, so I wanted the people in the back to stand so I can see them. I couldn't see them, but I could really hear them as clear as they were ne standing right next to me. Our application today is a perfect example of where this system really works. We are in a very long room. It's almost like a train and this wireless system really enables to almost have like a personal audio for you. We really need something wireless, you know, we don't want multiple cables that run across, multiple tables across. So I think this is a perfect system for a scenario like this. I've been working with Sure since uh, 89, so I can tell you how they've been evolving and this is the right solution for the customers. We do these meetings all over the world and our integrators get to see this in action. What they see is a system that is very versatile, very flexible, and in our case today, the system saved our, our meeting. So this is basically on the MXW front, how it can be used for voice note applications. So please uh, keep this product in mind because I think with this kind of scenario, this this is the future, like if this is going to continue. So so I also have uh, two questions in the chat uh, box. So one is, can MXA 910 can be used for small and big rooms? So if, uh, yes, it can be used for small and big rooms as well. So based on the application, you can use it. So we. For larger rooms, of course, we prefer going for MXA 910s. For uh, smaller huddle rooms, you can go for MXA 710s. And the next question by Mr. Santokumar is, does the software work only on open network or does it support with a private network like GS? It, it all, like, I don't know which software you're talking about. I think it's designer. So yes, it will work. In fact, when I was like, you know, in the Goldman Sachs network, I was using the show designer to configure all the systems. Yes, it works on your network as well. So it doesn't need any uh, network, but it needs to be on the same subnet as well. So that the, the whole system, the IP addressing part needs to be on the same uh, like addressing friend. So that is one thing that is required. Other than that, I don't think it's needed. That's why I told you when I was going to FCRs, F, between two FCRs, so when I enter FCR1, I could see only FCR. Hello. When I enter FCR1, I could be able to see only FCR1 devices. So in that case, if you have a Dante domain manager, such as that, you can have, you can talk to different devices across different subnets. So you, your question came at a very right time. So we have something called as a system on. So system on is basically for end users such as Goldman Sachs, you have like large deployments. For example, you don't have to personally go and monitor each room's battery gain structure. See, if, if the customer is calling, if one of your, like, sorry, not the customer, one of your uh, colleague is calling you for any trouble, he cannot access the microphone, there's no gain, there's no battery, such as that, you don't have to personally go there to identify the problem. You can even stop the problem before it even occurring. So before it even occurs. So you can have different this is just a software. You can have mail notifications. You can have email notifications. You can monitor different subnets. For example, sitting in one of the buildings where the FCR is, I don't, I don't actually know the name of the building. I'm sorry. So sitting on a building where the FCR is, if there is a different building altogether, let's say, uh, like you know, uh, another like building ten or building eight, so you can directly reach to the building eight via the system on software. So this is basically we're going to show is going to 
launch it for free in, i think in the next month or so once it is launched for free we we'll, of course we we'll give you a free license and a free demo when we come over there so you can utilize the product very efficiently so you can change gain different users permissions for different kinds of for example if i'm just a user so you can give me some of the i can just monitor the battery so if i'm just an uh, it admin stuff like you know who who gets to maintain all these equipments i get a uh, more control so you can have different access level of control so we have a very short video watch so i'll i'll play this video for system on System On Audio Asset Management Software by Sure makes it simple to manage large-scale or mission-critical deployments of Sure Audio hardware from one central platform in corporate and higher education settings. System On eliminates the need to physically check equipment room by room before meetings. You can instantly view the status of the Sure hardware in every room in your facility from a laptop, tablet, or smartphone. With System On, you can confirm that microphones are in their chargers and view their charge level without visiting the room. While meetings are in progress, you can check battery levels to verify whether mics will last through the meeting or if attention is required sooner. Instead of getting a call from a frustrated user about a dead battery, you can make the change when it's convenient for them and for you. Installed on your server, System On lets you monitor and control all of the networked Sure devices across your building or campus, even if they're on different subnets. While you're busy with other tasks, System On constantly monitors key metrics for all connected devices. When it detects a low battery level or a missing device, it notifies you via email or text message so that the issue can be addressed before it becomes critical. If audio or mute adjustments are required, System On lets you make those changes immediately so users don't have to wait for you to get to the room. If a Microflex wireless transmitter goes missing or has a low battery, you can remotely link a replacement transmitter at your desk to the access point in any room on the network and deliver it ready to use. System On lets you organize your Sure hardware logically by room, building, or campus saving time when attention is required. You can assign team members responsibility for different rooms or give them customized roles. Team members can sign in with their existing network credentials. Sure System On Audio Asset Management software is compatible with many Sure Audio products used in enterprise, education, and mission critical applications. With System On, you can be confident that the audio equipment across your network will always be ready to perform. System On helps you to detect problems before they become critical and provides you the ability to monitor and control sure hardware devices from one central location. To find out more about System On and how to obtain licenses, please contact your Sure Systems integrator or visit Sure online. That is how the system on works. So you can have, you can remotely monitor all these functions, and some of the functions are going to be available for free from the next month. So once we have the official confirmation or the software which is available on uh, online, so we will notify you, and you can uh, we can give you a demo on that as well. So with that, I come to the last part of my presentation. So we as Sun Infonet, we deal with. Myer Sound, we deal with Audio Focus and deal with Allen Heat. So there are other IP-based products which are there, uh, which we can use it for different solutions such as this. For example, if you have a divisible training room such as this, you can, I like, have configured seven MXA 910s, and we have a Allen Heat HM64, which is 64 cos 64 matrix mixing. So it has 12 unlocked inputs and it has 16 AC channels. So one of the key feature of this HM64 is that it works on 96 kilohertz. So usually the products which the Dante, everything, the, what we saw works on 9, 48 kilohertz. This is twice the amount. For each second, let's assume that you take one second and split that into 48 sampling. So you take one second and split that into 48 segments. But what this HM64 does is it splits one second into 96 segments. So we have a lot of definition, a lot of great depth, a lot of audio quality. So this, even this works on HM64 works on Dante. So we have different IP controllers, which you can have it in one of the FCRs. 
for like you know increasing decreasing audio if there is need be a solution this is touch and turn rotary so you can different sources you can choose for example input one or even an output one you can assign different options for these ip controllers and you can have different dante iqs so once you have the lot of unlock cables for example if you have uh, like a lot of unlock microphone let's, let's, let's assume that you have 10 sm58 or 10 sm57 you can plug it into the these dante boxes and this will convert that unlock microphones into dante signals as well so apart from the ip controllers we have something called as a custom control so which which is very explanatory in the coming video so how custom control works is you can connect that custom like device to a router so hm64 to a router from that you can access you can install an app in your one of your bring your own device platform it can be an ipad it can be your android or ios devices so in that you can control different functions so you can give permissions so for example if i'm a user i can get some access like only to change the levels but if i'm an admin i can monitor each and every function of that so this is one of the applications of the hm64 Custom Control from Allen and Heath is an installation app that gives different users the control they need over the audio system from their phone, computer, or tablet. The integrator uses our Custom Control Editor software to design fully customized interfaces. And when they're done, they're uploaded to the network. where they're ready for deployment on demand. So you can create the perfect interface for every type of user and every kind of device, all adapted to the specific needs of the venue. Custom control from Allen & Heath. Simple, customized control for installed audio. That is a very self-explanatory video. With that, we have our audio focus range. We have from 8 inch, 10 inch to 12 inch speaker. Even for small auditoriums or even for like very small divisible rooms, we can use an 8 inch. So for large spaces, we can use a 12 inch speaker. So all these speakers are Dante powered, so or Dante capable. So you don't you just have to run, not use unlock cables from from microphone to large installations. Also, even for wall mount systems. We have Dante solutions as well with audio focus brand. So this is the complete solution where the customer uses a soft codec and also a hard codec with venue a D. Two in each room and three divisible rooms. They have dual XTs, which which are used for local speech, and they use MXA 910s for the video conference part. So with this, this is kind of solution where you connect that POE to a router. With this, you can use our custom control app as well. So this is an all in all solution. So with that, even we have large installations, for example, such as thousand seater. This is a example of a thousand seater auditorium where we have line arrays, subwoofers, and delay or uh, sort of balcony speakers, which, which are used. So we have our line arrays and also subwoofers on POE, sorry, on Dante powered as well. These are not POE devices, of course, these require physical power, but they, they, these also work on Dante as well. So for example, the first speaker can only be Dante. So the loop, so the loop which goes from all these speakers need not be Dante, they can be work on AES protocol as well. So this is very, very good for audio focus technology. So they have this technology in where the customers will save a lot of cost on these devices as well. So even for large installations, we have S2 format mixers which can offer Dante and we have an SQ Mixpad app, which again, if you connect that to a router, you can use this SQ mix, mix, Mixpad app all over the place and you can route, you can, you can whatever the mixer performs, the functions which, which the mixer has, SQ Mixpad app will be able to do that as well. So with this, we can offer a full-fledged solution from, so like the example, like UNXT or Accent microphones, to, which is Dante powered with line arrays, subwoofers, with uh, 96 kilohertz operable uh, HM64 and SQ 
can offer a fully functional audio system as well. So with this, I uh, conclude my presentation. Sorry, I took a little bit of more time. So hope uh, all these informations were really effective. So if there's anything that you need, if there's any question, yeah. anything that you need. Okay, uh, this Shanta here. Thanks for the uh, presentation. It was uh, really very helpful. Uh, uh, we were actually keen on uh, knowing only one thing, like the, about the alerts which uh, you were mentioning. How difficult it is to actually get uh, the alerts. Like uh, presently, you know, like uh, the network what we are using is on AV network. Like all the equipments are on uh, AV network. Could you yes, just yes. El elaborate about that, like how how the alerts would be sent uh, inside the uh, GS network, or do we need to move all the devices to the AV, uh, sorry, to the GS network itself to achieve that? So, see, the thing is, it can the the system on can work on cross subnets. So, let me just take the slide. The system on can work on cross subnets. If you're talking about the alerts, which you need for, uh, I think this is what you're talking about. So what it does is it, it fo follows SMTP protocol, simple mail transfer protocol. So it doesn't have to be the same network. It can be cross subnets also. So you can manually add IP addresses. All you have to do is purchase licenses. For example, if you are using, for, let's assume that you have eight FCRs and each FCR has four MXA 910s, right? So that is 34, 32 devices, just for example. Then you need to purchase 32 licenses. For monitor, monitoring their like the system, usually for 910s you don't need to monitor anything at all. It's, but for ULXTs you might need to monitor the batteries. There are certain parameters which you need to monitor. So for that you can buy different licenses, and you can control the gain. Like you know you, you can find out whether it's a problem with the device, like you know control or even the cable is unplugged. It gives you specific informations on that and you can receive it via a mail or a SMS. So this is how it basically works. So this is this is coming very newly as a free product. So basically it was before as licensed version. So Sure is opening up some of the protocols for like some of the options for free, uh, maybe in the next week or so, maybe in July second week or so. So once it is done, I'll definitely, uh, I'll give you more information on what is available for free and what is available for cost. But it can work yeah. on cross platforms, as you can, as I like mentioned, it can work on cross platforms. It doesn't have to stay in the same subnet. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope everyone is clear on uh, AV over IP from our uh, complete uh, ecosystems. How sure is working, Alanit and uh, Audio Focus. If we can do end-to-end -end Dante solutions. Uh, uh, from our product portfolio, it will be uh, to reduce your uh, timing for monitor or network from your uh, GS networks, and uh, it will give a crystal clear audio from that. I hope everyone is clear, and if you have any 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 support you require in terms of pre-sales, post-sales designs and configuration, please uh, please call, uh, feel free.